Hello, this is Ed Morrison. I want to talk to you today about strategic doing, give you a little bit of an introduction to strategic doing and how it's used and why you might find it valuable. So before we start to move into what strategic doing is, let's, let's talk a little bit about the challenges that strategic doing was designed to, to meet. These challenges, of course, are really embedded in the idea of complexity. Uh, our old systems are breaking down. The future is coming at us faster than we uh, have ever experienced. Uh, the boundaries are blurring. People are integrating. New networks are forming. It all seems so, so complex. And the challenge, of course, is how do we deal with this complexity? What do we do? How do we manage that? Um, one of the important insights of strategic doing is that we manage this complexity by following simple rules. Imagine yourself on, on a tightrope walking across Niagara Falls, uh, as this gentleman uh, was experiencing. Uh, wind blowing in the face, uh, the mist coming up, uh, lights at night dragging a camera, all these challenges. Uh, and what did he do? How did he manage this complexity? Well, of course, he just uh, put one foot in front of the other. So this idea of managing complexity with simple rules is actually a uh, compelling idea and one that we want to develop a little further. Uh, another core idea to strategic doing is conversation. Is the notion that uh, if we think about uh, how we manage our conversations, we can actually guide our conversations and address strategic issues. Uh, people move in the direction of their conversation. So one of the core skills of strategic doing is guiding conversation and focusing that conversation and you make it very tight and uh, and, and uh, concentrated on critical strategic issues. So let me get into strategic doing and what that is. Um, first, is strategic doing is not strategic planning. Strategic planning developed in the late 1950s, early 1960s uh, in, as a way to manage hierarchical organizations, uh, big top-down organizations. Uh, and it's a very linear process and we're all fairly familiar with strategic planning where there's a lot of analysis, a lot of analysis, and then there's an action plan and hopefully something gets done. In strategic doing, we're facing a, a world without major hierarchies. No one can tell anybody what to do. Uh, so there is the potential for a lot of conflict. And so how do we uh, use a process to continuously align people toward uh, shared outcomes and to identify uh, link and leverage opportunities that we might follow. So let's walk, walk through strategic doing for a minute. Strategic doing is, uh, is focused on two questions, the core questions of strategy. Uh, the, first, the first question is, uh, where are we going? Uh, so we need outcomes. We need clear, uh, measurable outcomes. The second question of strategy is, how will we get there? So we also need pathways. Uh, these outcomes and these pathways define the strategy. So in order to answer these two questions, strategic doing actually divides them into four. The first two questions uh, are what could we do and what should we do. What could we do invites us to take our look at our assets and figure out how we can link and leverage these assets towards shared outcomes explore different opportunities that we might have by adding new assets to our network, and to see what we could do together uh, to advance our own individual agendas. The second question, of course, is uh, to make a choice. We can come up with a lot of ideas about what we could do, but we have to figure out uh, a very limited number, at least one, of course, but a very limited number of what we should do. And so that uh, uh, the next step of strategic doing is to convert one of these uh, opportunities into an outcome, an outcome with shared measurable um, metrics of success. And the, the reason metrics are important is because we have to understand where it is we're going together. Uh, visions don't really work very well in open, loosely connected networks. When we drive our conversation down to measurable outcomes, then we're pretty sure that we're talking about the same thing. The third question, now we're moving into the pathways, and the third question is what will we do? What will we do really invites us to uh, focus on our network and think about how we can all take steps together, small steps, 
relatively small steps together to move toward the outcome. By taking small steps together, we're actually taking a large step. And it's not just the people sitting around the table that we're talking about. Each individual comes in with a network of uh, 30, 40, 50, sometimes 100 people that they could call up and say, hey, I've got a great idea, I'd like your help. So uh, think about five people and say you've got uh, an average of 50 people in each network. You're really talking about a network of 250 people. What could you do by managing that network and guiding that network forward? So it's this notion of what will we do in focusing on a pathway project, a project that will start moving us toward our outcome with some clear milestones so that we can make adjustments if things aren't working right, and then uh, dividing up the workload, uh, like a phone tree, uh, so that we can all work together and take small steps. When we do that in alignment, we end up taking a large step. The next question, and the last question, is what's our 30-30? And this invites us to, to establish a process where we come back together again and revise our plan, figure out what we've learned, make adjustments, and then come up with the next 30-day action plan so by dividing uh, our collaboration into definable time buckets, uh, one month, three months, six months, time buckets, we continuously make adjustments and continuously refocus on what our outcome is and what our, what our next steps are. So what does strategic doing look like when we actually uh, deploy it? Well, it actually looks more like this. It's a process where we're thinking and doing continuously, and we're coming together on a regular basis. But in between those regular gatherings, individuals in the network are off doing their 30-day uh, task. So it might be uh, uh, an hour, it might be two hours, it might be three hours, but certainly it's not very much time because everybody's really focused on their own day job, and most of these challenges are we're dealing with our, our community challenges. But how do we organize all this? Well, it turns out that we can organize this with a, with a uh, managed network that looks something like this. At the center, there's a core with uh, typically seed investors, people who have put some money into this process. It might be a community foundation, it might be a university, it might be a government entity. But the core is a, a core team of people, somewhere between five and nine people, who guide, convene, and manage the process. Uh, then there's a handful of focus areas, strategic focus areas, and uh, anywhere from three to five, seven. You don't want to have many more than seven focus areas, but uh, three or four or five focus areas make some sense. And then below those, those are individual initiatives, or you can think of those as Pathfinder projects, projects that we are going to use to get to our shared outcomes. Managing this network, actually, if everybody understands, the basic process at work, uh, which is very simple. Managing the network actually becomes very simple because transparency, the sharing of, uh, of ideas and the sharing of, uh, of resources uh, takes hold throughout the network. So uh, strategic doing workshops, uh, we've been holding these all over the country. Uh, and we invite you to, to contact us and if you're interested with uh, developing more of a strategic doing focus to your activities, learning about the discipline, uh, we run these workshops and we're very happy to, to uh, talk to you. We, we work primarily with anchor institutions, anchor colleges and universities within each, um, each region or state that we operate in. So for example, in Alaska, we're working with the University of Alaska. Um, in Michigan, we're working with Michigan State University. In Wisconsin, it's uh, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and University of Wisconsin-Parkside, uh, Northern Illinois University, University of Missouri, uh, Kansas State. We're continuing to work and expand this network because colleges and universities can teach these skills and we want to share the curriculum with them. So this is the network that we're starting to build. It's a network of, uh, as I said, colleges and universities that can support communities and regions as they develop this kind of uh, expertise, this expertise in, in developing new strategies for open, loosely connected networks. So that's about it. I want to thank you very much for spending a couple of minutes with me uh, to give you a sense of, of what strategic doing is. Please. Um, Email me if you've got any thoughts and questions, and we'd look forward to working with you.